The 2022 offseason is here, and what better way to celebrate it than to pretend to be Joe Douglas himself. I'm going to go through re-signings, cuts, renegotiations, NFL free agency, a seven-round Jets mock draft. You guessed it. It's a Jets mock offseason. Let's go ahead and let's get after it. Before I get into the video, if I could get you to please jet up the like button. And if you're new here and you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. I want to let you know we'll be live streaming this upcoming Wednesday night. We'll be discussing all things New York Jets offseason. The link for that video will be in the description. So to kick things off, we have about $48 million projected of cap space in the 2022 offseason. And that's pre-cuts and pre-trades and you know pre-re-signings as well. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start making our first cuts here. We're going to get rid of some players that maybe are, you know, poor performers over the last few years or in 2021. And then also just players that we, you know, we want to make upgrades at as well. So the first player, everybody's going to be thrilled to hear it. Guard Greg Van Roten, the, the guard that we picked up uh, in free agency from the Carolina Panthers. We are moving on. Nothing needs to be said here. We're saving three and a half million dollars. There's zero dead money here. It's a win to cut Greg Van Roten. We can improve the position through free agency, through the draft. No brainer. I'm also going to cut Trayvon Wesco, the tight end slash fullback slash H back. I don't know if he was a terrible fullback for us last offseason, but I feel like he's one of those positionless players. We really do need a fullback, a bona fide fullback in this offense. We see it with the San Francisco 49ers with Kyle Juszczyk. Let's go find a fullback maybe in free agency or in the undrafted free agent market. I would love to see us improve at that position and get a little bit more, I don't want to say production, but better blocking basically from that position. The next player is left tackle slash right tackle Chumi Idoga, who we drafted out of USC, or I should say Mike McCagnan drafted. It saves us about another million dollars. Uh, and again, we're just, we're kind of adding you know, some money to our cap space, but also we're getting rid of some players that just have not panned out at all for the New York Jets. Having said that, here's another player, Blake Cashman. We're going to go ahead and we're going to cut him as well. He's way too often injured. And when he was playing on the football field, there just was no impact made. So again, saves us a million bucks and we're going to move on from Blake Cashman. The next player is going to be defensive tackle Sheldon Rankins, who we just signed this past offseason. If we cut him, we save five and a half million dollars, and there's minimal dead money here if we do make the cut. It's a lot of money. It's, it's a five and a half million dollars. We can go get somebody at another position of need. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking of Jonathan Marshall, the, the defensive tackle that we drafted uh, last uh, in the 2021 draft class. I'd like to save some money and let him kind of get his opportunity as well to play football in 2022. And then the final cut is going to be tight end Ryan Griffin, the veteran tight end. And here we're saving three and a half million. I'm sorry, three million dollars. It seems to me like this is a no brainer cut. We need to upgrade the tight end position. In total, we're saving approximately 16 million dollars by making these cuts. We're going to have over $60 million now projected for re-signings, free agents, and also for the draft. Here are the players that we're going to re-sign to the New York Jets because we feel like they offer upside, they are younger players in most cases, and they also provide that depth and veteran leadership as well. So the first player that we need to talk about is Braxton Berrios. The rumors are that he's going to be asking $9 million and that he is going to test free, the free agent market. I think he will test free agency. I think that's going to definitely happen. But I don't see him getting anywhere near that $9 million mark. I personally am going to give him $6 million per year. Uh, I think that's a fair price. He's a pro bowler as a returner. And again, offers upside as an offensive weapon. So I'm giving him that $6 million per year to come back to play for the New York Jets. I am also re-signing guard slash center Dan Feeney. I know a lot of people want to trash this guy and say he's terrible. I actually like the versatility that he brings being able to play center and guard. And I also like the fact that, you know, he kind of played okay last year. There were some spots where he didn't do so terribly. Bringing him back on a one-year deal, probably about two 
two and a half million dollars for the season. I think as a backup, he's more than adequate. So I'm bringing him back. Joe Flacco, I'm actually opting to bring back Joe Flacco here. He seems like the player that just never wants to be a New York Jet, but I think that the deal will get done. I think he enjoyed playing for the Jets last year, probably enjoyed mentoring Zach Wilson. They seem to have a decent relationship. So I'm bringing him back for about three and a half million dollars to be the backup quarterback in 2022. Javelin Guidry, a cornerback, a slot cornerback. I bring him back another one-year deal, probably about $800,000 to a $1 million to bring him back. I think that that's a depth signing and a guy that can compete during training camp. I think that's a good move. Tim Ward, the defensive lineman, I'm bringing him back for a similar contract, $800,000 to a $1 million. Bring him in there, make him compete. He's still very, very young. And again, we want to keep some of these younger guys like Gidry and like Tim Ward. I'm also going to re-sign Eddie Pinheiro, our kicker from last year. He is not perfect. He has not proven that he is the long-term answer at the kicker position, but I'm willing to spend $850,000 to a $1 million to re-sign him. And again, the Jets are going to have to get another kicker in here to compete with him. It could be another veteran. It could be a uh, kicker that they go to the undrafted free agent market as well. But overall, these are the guys that I think the Jets should keep. One name that I didn't mention was quarterback Mike White. I think that the Jets may bring him back as the third quarterback, but I think I'm personally more comfortable with them just paying Joe Flacco to be the main 1A backup quarterback to Zach Wilson. And again, I think that, you know, could Mike White be brought back? Yes, absolutely. And they may even opt to keep him over Flacco. But again, if I were in charge, that's what I would do. Before we get to free agency, we need to go ahead and reach out to a couple of veterans on the team that we might be able to renegotiate contracts with. And the first player on this list is going to be CJ Mosley. He has openly talked about wanting to turn this thing around for the New York Jets. And he's talked about how, you know, Recruiting players, you know, he gave a statement at the end of the season and wanting to get players here that were really good football players. Time to put your money where your mouth is, CJ Mosley, and potentially move some of his salary, which, by the way, is the highest salary on the roster in 2022. Transfer some of that salary into a bonus and save some te- save the team some money in cap space. This will allow flexibility to pl- add more players in free agency, better players in free agency. And again, I think he might be willing to do this again, just based on what he's been talking about the last couple of years. I think I'm pretty confident that that's something that we could get done. Connor McGovern, the center. I'm not releasing Connor. I like Connor. I think he's a good football player. And I think that he gets a lot of flack from some fans. He's a decent starting center in the National Football League. Right now, he's being paid as the 10th best center in football, which is just a little bit high in my opinion. So I'm asking him, Take a pay cut of about $1 to $2 million. Save us a little bit of cap space. I don't think cutting him is an option. I know it's a lump sum of about $9 million if we do cut him. But I don't love the idea of having to replace another offensive lineman when we already have to replace a right guard position. So ideally, keeping McGovern and saving a little bit of money is the best option. And then the last player is going to be George Fant. He's being paid as the ninth highest or ninth best right tackle in the National Football League. That is the position he began the year in 2021, transferred over to left tackle, played really well. And I think the idea here is, is that if Mekhi Becton does win the left tackle spot back, George Fant's being a little bit overpaid to play right tackle. So again, looking for about a one to $2 million, you know, restructuring of the contract, save some space. Again, these are veterans and I think that they want to win. So, Being flexible and being open to making these renegotiations, I think, is really important. Free agency has arrived, and I think that Joe Douglas is going to be balanced this free agency. There are players out there that I would love for him to go spend big money on, like safety Marcus Williams, safety Jesse Bates III, if he does hit free agency. I also like the idea of even adding a Dalton Schultz, the tight end from the Dallas Cowboys the guard James Daniels from the Chicago Bears, but I'm not sure that Joe Douglas is going to go hog wild this offseason. I added some players, five players in free agency that I think helps the depth, helps the starting spots, and again, adds some veteran presence and some players that are still in their primes as well. 
The first one's going to be tight end David Njoku from the Cleveland Browns. This is a guy that was drafted in the first round. Very, very good athlete. Decent blocker. I think he fits the scheme. And I think that this is a guy that would be a really good one-two punch with another tight end that we could possibly draft in the NFL draft. So I'm going to sign him for about three and a half mil per year. The next one is going to be our splash move. It's going to be guard Lakin Tomlinson, the guard from the San Francisco 49ers. I think this is a perfect, perfect scenario for the Jets to be able to land somebody that has experience in the Shanahan offense. He's only 29 years old, so they can bring him in for, you know, a two to three year deal and he'll be able to play out the, the terms of that contract. He's a really solid guard. I would say anywhere from seven to eight million dollars per year is probably fair for him. Bring him in, plays right guard. It's a plug and play and you just forget about the right guard spot. And I think we're in a lot better situation right away by signing him. Uh, safety Xavier Road, excuse me, Xavier Woods. From the uh, Minnesota Vikings, this is a guy who made a lot of plays in 2021, had a really decent year at the safety position. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add him to the squad and give us an opportunity to get a veteran safety and give us the opportunity to go ahead and also draft somebody in the NFL draft to pair him with Ashton Davis, Elijah Riley, and again, Xavier Woods. Linebacker Foye Aluakon, the linebacker from the Atlanta Falcons. I do have a video on the channel talking about him as a potential target for the New York Jets. This should be a no-brainer. I think he would be awesome playing on the opposite side of C.J. Mosley. He's fast. He's played under Jeff Ulbrich and very, very aggressive football player and makes plays. He creates turnovers, gets sacks, and I just think we need another linebacker. We can't rely on Quincy Williams to play every down opposite C.J. Mosley. I don't think that's a good idea. So go get Foye Aluakon and increase the run defense on this football team. The last player is going to be a veteran signing. It's going to be cornerback Akello Witherspoon. He played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He played for the 49ers when Robert Sala was coaching there. There's familiarity. He's still in his prime. And this is a guy with nice size and speed. And again, I think that, you know, we're not looking to make a huge splash at the cornerback spot. I think mostly we're just trying to add a guy that can come in, can play, and be a productive member on the defense. The 2022 NFL Draft is now set to begin, and the New York Jets at number four. There's not going to be an opportunity to trade back. I don't think teams are looking to trade up into that top five this year for a quarterback. So the Jets are most likely going to be sticking and picking. If Kayvon Thibodeau is there, I think it's a no-brainer, and that's who I have the New York Jets selecting at number four. There's definitely a chance he could go in the top three, though. And if that were the case, they definitely would be looking for an offensive lineman for sure. Uh, and the number 10 pick, I have a projected trade here. The New York Jets are going to trade back from the 10th spot all the way back to the number 20 spot with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And they are going to acquire the number 52 overall in this current draft. And they will also probably accrue a future pick in the 2023 draft. So again, I like the idea of trading back here because you're you're getting another draft pick and you're also going to get into that sweet spot in that 20 range where I think a lot of these linebackers like Devin Lloyd, Nicobe Dean, uh, there's some cornerbacks that could be available in that 20s range as well. Wide receivers are available. And that's actually where I have us going at the number 20th spot. I have the New York Jets selecting Traylon Burks number 20 overall after trading back with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Some of you might say he's not going to be available. I actually think he could be there. I think that there is some people that are high on Garrett Wilson. I think that there are more teams interested in Drake London than we realize. So I do think Traylon Burks could be available. He's a versatile chess piece, could be our version of Debo Samuel. So I'm going to nab him at 20 overall. At the 35th pick, I'm going to go ahead and draft center slash guard Zion Johnson. This is a guy who can be a, you know, a backup and eventually become the starting center after McGovern goes after this season. And I think this is a great move to make in the second round. He won't have to play right away. And ultimately, we're going to have a really good starter in our hands in the future and no need to go and spend money on a free agent center in the 2023 season. At pick 38, I have the New York Jets, and I'm projecting yet another trade. 
Joe Douglas is going to trade for Calvin Ridley, the wide receiver from the Atlanta Falcons. He's probably going to have to send maybe another late round pick in addition to that second round pick. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be very aggressive. I'm going to go get Traylon Burks. I'm going to go get Calvin Ridley. And I'm already smiling. I mean, just the thought of having that many weapons for Zach Wilson just really is an exciting thought. And I'm not done. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make another draft pick at number 52 overall. I'm going to select linebacker Chad Muma. He's going to be the Mike linebacker in this defense for a long time. Playmaker. Great at defending the run. I think he's an awesome fit in this defense. And again, we've got to do better against the run. Uh, number 69, I have a selecting tight end, Jeremy Ruckert, the tight end out of Ohio State. He's going to be able to block day one. This is a guy that you can play right away and get the running game going. And eventually, I think he's going to be that tight end that can become a really solid receiving option as well. Pick number 108 in the Fourth round, I have the New York Jets selecting safety Kirby Joseph out of Illinois. This is one of my dark horses coming out in the NFL draft. He's got range. He was a hum immensely improved player in 2021. Five interceptions, a bunch of tackles, made a lot of plays on the football. And I'm pairing him up with our free agent signing, Xavier Woods. I think it's just a no-brainer here. And again, we're not spending a real high pick on Kirby Joseph. I think it's a great swing at a position of need. I think Ashton Davis and he would, he would be a really good competition there and would hopefully elevate one of them to becoming a good starter in the National Football League. At pick 114, I have a selecting cornerback, Kobe Bryant. Uh, Kobe Bryant, I think that, you know, there's some things that he needs to learn coming into the National Football League, but he makes a lot of plays on the football size. He's got speed. The thing he's going to need to work on is some of his technique, and he is a very aggressive cornerback, so he's going to need to learn, and he's going to need some coaching, but I like the move here, getting a guy who can play and make some plays on the football. Two more picks, 144. I have running back Brian Robinson Jr. out of Alabama. This is a guy that's going to be our thumper, and he's going to be able to complement Michael Carter perfectly. I love the addition to add him here. And then with the final pick, 159, I have us taking tackle Cole Strange out of Chattanooga. I like the idea of having a late round pick offensive lineman to develop on the team. And you just want to make sure that you have good depth and young players on the offensive line. And you should continuously draft offensive linemen every single year. So recapping this mock off season, I feel like it hit some of the biggest topics and some of the biggest needs that the New York Jets fans have been talking about all off season. And it starts with being able to add weapons around Zach Wilson. And I feel like this mock off season is highly aggressive in doing that. We drafted Traylon Burks out of Arkansas. We traded for Calvin Ridley from the Atlanta Falcons. We signed David Njoku. We drafted Jeremy Ruckert. You know, those are some real serious weapons that we're adding to the team. And that's not even counting guys like Michael Carter, who will be returning, Elijah Moore, Corey Davis, this is and Braxton Berrios. You know, these are guys that we feel like we can really use in our offensive scheme to help assess Zach Wilson in year two. And that is very, very important. We have to be able to analyze what he's going to be moving forward. And these weapons will help him to do just that. Offensive line, we added veterans, we added some drafted players as well. It's going to improve the starting unit, but also it's going to improve the depth. We're going to have young guys that are going to be developing and eventually will become starters in 2022 or in the 23 season as well. And then you flip it, you look at the defense, getting a pass rush going, stopping the run, making turnovers, creating turnovers on this defense are just, it's so important that they get going doing this. And again, I feel like this mock-off season does that, adding pass rushers like Kayvon Thibodeau, getting linebackers like Alfoye Aluakon from Atlanta, linebacker Chad Muma in the draft. And then we did the same thing with the secondary. We added veterans and we drafted players. Kobe Bryant, Kirby Joseph, the cornerback, and the safety that we drafted, I think are good pieces on this defense. And then you take a look at the veterans we signed, Akello Witherspoon, familiarity in the scheme, still a nice player in his prime. And we also signed Xavier Woods, 
a veteran safety to help complement this young squad. I look forward to reading all of your comments and responding to them. I hope you guys enjoyed the mock off season. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Hope you all have a great day. Go Jets! And I'll see you guys next time.